My name is Megan and I'm a former straight A student when I was in high school. I'm a former person who dreamed of college since the day I was in elementary school and dreamed of schooling and, and really loved it until I figured out what it was really doing to me and I got out as quick as possible and my life changed ever since. And today I sit here because I want to tell you why I think that we need less schooling and not more. So I'm going to read, if you would be so kind to listen, to a little speech that I've been working on. And this is kind of a practice run, but I figure that it might be valuable to come upon the ears of somebody who needs to hear this. So, I shall begin. Not too long ago, I read an insightful book by the late John Taylor Gatto called Dumbing Us Down, The Hidden Curriculum of Compulsory Schooling. I've now read this book through multiple times. And doing so has introduced me to new ways of examining the education problem. I've too come to the conclusion that what we need is less school, not more. First and foremost, we must make clear the distinction between school and education. The concepts are oxymorons. While they may be grouped together and used interchangeably, they're far from synonymous. Education is an intimate experience one undergoes as he seeks to know himself while schooling is the forceful imposing of one's beliefs upon another so that his patterns of behavior are easily predictable by those perceived to be above him. A more proficient word for schooling is not education, but rather indoctrination. Interestingly, the word educate is derived from the Latin term educar, which means to bring forth from within. Thus, it is clear that education is a process of self-realization and any method of learning that does not begin with the self as a centerpiece is flawed. Allow me to introduce you to the modern American school system, which is scientifically designed to ensure that education doesn't occur. And this was stated by the former U.S. Commissioner of Education, William T. Harris, who said that overeducation was a massive concern. One mustn't help but wonder what our schools are doing for eight hours a day, five days a week, nine months a year, if they're not educating our children. In 1916, the Dean of the Stanford School of Education wrote that our schools are in a sense factories in which the raw products, the children, are to be shaped and fashioned to meet the various demands of life. The gentleman who wrote these words was Elwood P. Coverley, and in Gatto's own words, was one of the most influential figures in 20th century American education. Unfortunately, it is so that our schools and all the entities that work within it, whether they're conscious of it or not, toil vigorously to teach our children that their lives are insignificant. The constant ringing of the bells teaches them that nothing is too important to focus on. And being raised in a sea of strangers teaches students that family life and community are things of the past. School teaches our children to disregard themselves entirely and see their neighbors as unfit to rule. School teaches a child everything he needs to know except himself, the most important concept to master. Does it really make much sense to advocate for more schooling for more of this solving problem, for more of this, um, excuse me, dang, I messed up the ending. That's okay. I'm going to re-say that again for effect. Does it really make more sense? I did it again. Okay. It's okay. It's practice one. Okay. Does it really make more sense to advocate for more schooling, for more of this throbbing problem? That's it for now.